I'm Dr. Katie McHugh. I'm a scientist with the Sarasota Dolphin Research Program, and I'm here to tell you about the life of a Sarasota Bay resident bottlenose dolphin, a local celebrity of sorts named Beggar, who was notorious for approaching boaters and begging for food for more than 20 years. Normally, wild dolphins will use a variety of tactics to find and catch fish, and they rarely approach humans. However, just like our pets and like other wild animals that can develop problem behaviors, dolphins can also learn bad habits if they get food in connection with people. They can even teach these unnatural behaviors to others. Often, the items fed by people are unhealthy or abnormal for wildlife, and these close encounters can be dangerous to both the animals and people involved. So it is important to avoid direct contact with wild animals whenever possible, and instead watch them from a safe distance. Feeding wild dolphins is also illegal under the Federal Marine Mammal Protection Act, and can result in a hefty fine to people caught violating the law. In addition to being dangerous, when wild animals become habituated to taking food from people, they may end up having abnormal lives in other ways too. At least in part because he learned to associate people with food, Beggar's life took a much different path from that of a typical wild male dolphin. Beggar's story has a lot to teach us about how people should interact with marine wildlife, and his eventual death also highlights the potential consequences of illegally feeding wild animals. Beggar's story begins in 1990 near Nokomis, Florida, just south of Sarasota Bay. We first met Beggar when he was a juvenile dolphin learning to survive on his own, and at a young age he had already learned that people could be a source of an easy meal. He was seen regularly during our population monitoring surveys over the next 22 years, occasionally interacting with other begging dolphins and almost always in close proximity to boaters. Although he lived to be a middle-aged adult, Beggar traveled in an extremely limited home range, and he did not form normal male social bonds, nor was he a father as far as we know. Instead, he spent most of his time alone, interacting with or waiting for boaters, rather than traveling, feeding, or socializing with other dolphins. Unfortunately, Beggar's story came to an abrupt end on September 21, 2012, when he was found dead. He was recovered by Moat Marine Lab's Stranding Investigations Program, not far from where we first saw him all those years ago. While a necropsy was unable to determine a conclusive cause of death, it was clear that Beggar's health had suffered greatly over the years as a consequence of his close interactions with boats and his abnormal diet. Although Beggar's story doesn't have a happy ending, one of the biggest lessons he taught us was not to lose hope. Surprisingly, it turns out that even longtime habituated dolphins can kick the habit if they aren't rewarded for their begging behavior. In a 2011 study, we found that Beggar was able to adopt a more natural foraging style during times when he wasn't receiving food from people. This is a very positive thing for other dolphins heading down a similar path in Sarasota Bay or elsewhere, because it means that it is possible for us to break the cycle. If people simply stop feeding wild dolphins, then they can go on to live long, healthy, normal lives. You can help keep wild dolphins wild by staying at least 50 yards away and watching from a distance, making sure to never throw fish, food, or trash items overboard, and teaching others what you've learned by sharing the information in this video and the Don't Feed Wild Dolphins public service announcement. For more information, please visit don'tfeedwilddolphins.org and sarasotadolphin.org.